Hello and welcome to Data Research Labs. For this tutorial, we're going to discuss advanced table-level data validation tests in SQL Server. Specifically, we're going to look at heuristic thresholds, data diffs, and schema diff checks. Heuristic thresholds are an advanced table-level data validation technique. There are two examples in this rule set. The first example is null rates of specified columns. For example, verify that column X is null less than 10% of the time. The second example is frequency distributions of specific column values. So for example, column C has a value red less than 10% of the time and the value yellow greater than 40% of the time. Before we start, a quick note that the final section of this video walks you through accessing all of the SQL snippets in GitHub. Also, the GitHub link is posted below in the description section of this video. Now let's jump to SQL Server Management Studio and review the heuristic data validation test. We're gonna start here with test case number eight and it's going to verify the null rate thresholds for specific columns, three columns in particular from the demo HR departments table. So let's look at the innermost query here just to get our bearing. Let's highlight all this and run it. It's gonna return three columns where it's gonna count nulls and give us a percent of the total. So the count of total rows in the table is the denominator and that's divided into the sum or the count of department names where it's null. So let's run it and see what we get. So we get Null rate for department uh, name, none, zero. Null rate for manager ID, 59%. Null rate for the URL, 74%. Okay, so let's go include the outer wrapper, or the outer query, and the inner query. And this outer query is gonna take these percentages, and there's a little bit of business logic here that says that if the null rate for the department name is not zero, pop an error with the rejection code. If the null rate of the manager ID exceeds 65%, 6% higher than the observed rate. If it's greater than 65%, then pop an error and greater than 80% for the URL. So we'll run that and they should all be pass. If any were a fail, let's drop this down to 45% just to show you what a fail looks like in a rejection code. So you get a rejection code. Now it's a case statement. So if it fails here, it's not going to check any of the when statements below there. So it fails at the first one. So put your most important columns up top. And if I were to run it with the details, so there's my common table expression there. And then I have my little bit of logic that's gonna convert this rejection code into just a single pass or fail. Next, we're gonna move along to test case number nine, the second of the heuristic test cases. It's going to verify the value frequency thresholds for the region ID field. So for example, the region ID field is one, make sure that the frequency rate is between 28 and 36% of the time. Let's just uh, jump right in. Let's go to the innermost query here of three different levels here and a fourth level there. So let's run the, this, and you'll see that we have region ID, one, two, three, four, values in a table, and we're calculating the count of that occurrence of region ID. So one occurs eight times. That's our numerator. Our denominator is just give me the count of the entire table over and over and over again, 25, 25, 25. And so we run those and we get our little table. That's our inner table. That's hard to work with. So let's run this guy and see what the outer, the second level querying does. And it basically takes the same region IDs and converts them to percentages. So what we had before was eight out of whatever, 25, it's 32%, 20%, et cetera. So that's nice, nicer to deal with. And then we have a wrapper around that, which is gonna take region ID one, and make sure that the frequency rate, 32, is between 28 and 36% of the time. If it's not, it'll give us a rejection error code and say that, hey, the frequency error at rate at region ID one is outside the threshold. I'm expecting between 28 and 36%, but the actual is blah, 40%. Makes it real clear to see what's going on. So let's run this, execute it. Region ID, one, two, three, four, frequency rate, actual, blah, 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 and then pass. Now, these were just nested levels, three levels deep of tables. This is a CTE, so common table expression. So there's my with details. And then I wanna basically roll all these passes up into a single pass. That's all this is doing. Diff checks are another advanced table level data validation technique. We will walk through three diff validation test examples. Number one, a schema diff. The answer is the question, did the table and column properties change? Number two, a static data diff where we compare smaller ref tables and their data against embedded static SQL union all queries that are built right into the script. And third, dynamic 
data diffs where we compare a table against a complete shadow copy or snapshot of that table looking for changes over time. So here we are in SQL Man Server Management Studio at rule set number eight, the diff checks, at test number 59, test case number 59, and we're going to look at schema diffs. And we're going to start off, there's a common table expression. My expected results is just a union all query. My actual results is a bunch of SQL logic, generic, that looks at the information schema columns. And you basically change the catalog name, demo HR, demo HR database. And then locations, that's the table name, locations right there. And there's the column. So I'm looking for changes in here, and I just run this test case every day, every hour, whatever, every week, and it'll tell me when this schema changes, the table changes. Let's look at these. Let's look at the union all query. Let's run that. That is our expected results. So we've hard-coded ordinal position one is the field name, lo column name, location ID with the type numer numeric four comma zero, and knowable, it's not null. So there we go. We just dump all of our results out. You just copy paste more rows in. If you have a 50 column table, just copy and paste it 44 more times and then change all of the status or write your own SQL. You'll see you could take this actual, actually run it and then generate this. Anyway, that is our expected hard coded in there. Here's our actual. Let's go run that. Execute it. And there we go. Almost the same as what the expected was, but 001 instead of 1, et cetera. But we're going to take the expected natural and diff them, and that's what this logic does right here. And it says, hey, saying if there's zero fields, then the table doesn't exist. If column name is null when it's doing a join, then the expected column is missing. If the ordinal positions are different, then it, and it shows you that, hey, it's expecting this position, but the actual is that position. So it's really nice. It, it dumps out the rejection codes and shows you what's going on. So let's run the entire thing. And it's going to compare the expected versus actual, and we get a pass. Moving along to test case number 60, which is the second example of data diffs, and it's for static, small static tables. So let's highlight and give you a visual of what our expected result is. Our expected result is hard-coded, and we say that the region ID of 1 should be Europe, 2 should be America, Americas, etc. So we establish our expected result here, and then the data under test is actually this table, demo HR regions table, uh, wherever that is, right there. Double-click it, look at the data, select top 1,000. So there we go, that's what's in the table. And basically just taking this and hard coding it there. And this technique works for small tables. I don't know, 10, 15, 20 rows and 2, 3, 5, 10 columns. At some point it starts to get kind of, especially if these values change, then you're not going to want to do this static table method. But it's a great way to monitor tables that shouldn't change much so that you know right away that, hey, I have 20 of these configuration tables and someone changed something there. Great way to do it. So you set up your expected results, and then you do a left outer join from your expected or metadata results to your target table on whatever the primary keys are. And then you're looking for, hey, is the primary key, when I left outer join it, null? And even if it's two or three fields, you just tack on and primary key two equals and primary key three equals left table, right table. So you do all that, and then you really only need to say, hey, does the regions or right table ID null for one of the primary key fields. If it is, then hey, it's missing. You know, so if three is missing, that's what this guy is checking for that line. And then down here, there's only one field whose value we need to check, the value Europe. So if the region name actual R doesn't match the region name expected M for metadata, then trigger an error. Region name doesn't match. I expect this one, and my actual is that one. So that's what's happening. Now I can't run these. I can run this piece. You see it down there, but the rest I have to run all as one unit. So I will run this, and there we go. I get a pass. So that is how you do a static ref table and compare it to the actual ref table and run it as frequently as you want. Put it in an automated script and have it run scheduled. And if it fails, you'll get a nice rejection code. And finally, test case number 61, the third of the diff checks. This is a data diff that's dynamic where you're comparing two different tables. So, oh, wow, there's a lot going on here. I have two different tables that basically, this is a pretty neat trick. 
the table data should exactly match between the table jobs and the table jobs snapshot. So the table jobs I have here, and then at some point I just did a create table or a, a select into, and, and I took the contents of this and created job snapshot from it. And what I'm doing, let's just highlight and run so you can get a visual. And if I were to sort it, oh, it's not going to let me sort it. Basically, what it's doing is it's taking the contents of jobs, listing it all out here, and then it's tacking on with the union all job snapshot. And it'll be easier to see when I, now well, here. So there's one, two, three, four, ten rows all the way to 38 rows, expand it, and you'll see. So the jobs table comes first, and then the job snapshot table comes next, and it's just repeating. But let me run this with a group by and see how we go from 38 rows to 19 rows, half. Why? Because we're grouping on every field. Well, we're not grouping on the table name. We're taking the max table name. And that's so that if there's a difference, we know which table it's in. But the job ID, starting here, column job ID, title, minimum salary, maximum salary, all fictitious data, there's a count of two. The jobs table has one row with those values, and the job snapshot has one row. It just so happens that job snapshot is the maximum value. So in this case, every single table rows values exactly match between the two tables and that's why you get a count of two and that's why when I am looking for a count less than two I will get nothing because everything occurs exactly twice because everything is an exact match that's a really slick way I learned from a guy named Henry at work and he did it for giant tables wide and deep and it was a really slick way to spot differences when you need to over time in big tables and that's the trick. You got to group by every field and you union all the two tables together. Now, if if I had one and one, then it's nice. If, if a row is missing from a table, I'll have one and I'll have the exact table, either jobs or job snapshot, that has the row and the missing table won't have the row. So that's a nice way to find a missing row. If there's a diff where the primary key doesn't exist at all and the row doesn't exist at all. If there's a difference on any one field, then you'll have two rows, one for jobs, one for job snapshot, and you'll have all the field values, but you'll see which field is different. Maybe 4,200 here and 4,100 on the other table, and you would see two rows, jobs with 4,100 and all the other fields the same, count of one, and you'd see job snapshot, just like it is here, except with the count of one. Really neat, universal way to diff tables. And uh, so what you've seen is that, now we have an outer wrapper and a little bit of data logic that's going to say, hey, there's a mismatch found table, blah, 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 all the field names. It just dumps all the details in an error column. And then you have the outer wrapper. So if I run the whole thing, it's just going to get a single P for a pass. And if I want to go look at the details, I can do it here. And in some of the advanced scripts, we actually dump these details out so that dynamically you get the results you can have it emailed to you or whatever, and you know exactly which table, which row, which column had a difference and failed. So very slick trick for generically doing table diffs and automating it. And I encourage you to look down below in the descriptions on this YouTube video, look at the GitHub link, and you can get access to this script and some of the more advanced ones too, and go build your own from it. To download the SQL scripts of this video, open up a browser and go to HTTPS colon github.com slash data research labs all one word hit enter on here you'll find a sql scripts link somewhere it happens to be here it happens to be here you can search for it on the page anyway find it click it and just scroll down on the page and you'll see the information on the page skip data dictionary data validation scripts that's what you want click that scroll down you can read the details on that how to use it what it is notes, and then here we go. So SQL Server, there's all the different scripts. MySQL, I don't have the scripts written yet, I gotta do that. Oracle, I have the scripts and the videos done. So find the link you want, let's say diff checks, click it. Scroll down, and these ones are so big, the SQL snippets, that I had to roll them up and col or collapse them. Uh, anyway, let's expand that. 
there's the details, and here's the big long SQL script that diffs the schema, the column names, table names, data types, etc. So I have an expected set, and then you compare it. Anyway, the uh, little clipboard icon here is what you would click to copy all of this properly formatted and ready to go. And it's in the clipboard, so why don't I pop open a brand new notepad and paste what's in the clipboard. There we go. There's all the SQL from the script ready to go. You can use it in your SQL editor. Thank you for watching, and please, if you found this video helpful, click like and subscribe. Also, check out our other videos and related playlists in the boxes to the right.